Number 60. The following quantities are placed in a container. We have 1.5 times 10 to the 24th atoms of hydrogen. Then we have 1.0 mole of sulfur. And then we have 88.0 grams of diatomic oxygen. Letter A. What is the total mass in grams for the collection of all three elements? Okay. So first off, let's just list out what we have. They told us that we had 1.5 times 10 to the 24th, and that is atoms of H. Then they told us that we had 1.0 moles of sulfur. And then we have 88.0 grams of diatomic oxygen. So diatomic means that you have two atoms. So di in chemistry means two. Atomic means atoms. So we have 88.0 grams of O2. Now, there's one specific reason why I'm leaving it as atoms of H and not H2 is because specifically, um, they did say that we had diatomic oxygen. So they gave us O2. Now, generally speaking, hydrogen, if it ex is existing by itself, it should be H2. However, they didn't say that it was, you know, diatomic hydrogen. And they specifically said that we have atoms, not molecules. Atoms means that you're only allowed to have one of the element. However, if we were talking about O2, this would be molecules of oxygen because you have two oxygens. So I'm going to solve the problem as if we just have one H. Okay, so now let's just bring this a little bit down, make them all pretty much uh, symmetrical between the space in between them. <laughs> but now we just want to find out the total mass in grams of all three of these elements. Well, if we want to find out the total mass in grams, it seems like they all have to be in grams. So this seems like we're just converting. Now, they did tell us that we need atoms of H, right? They we're starting off with atoms of H. So essentially, I have to take the atoms of H and somehow go to grams of H, grams of hydrogen. We have moles of sulfur. So I have to somehow go from moles of sulfur to grams of sulfur. And since here, since we already have grams of O2, I don't need to convert this one. So we're going to leave oxygen on the back burner. So in essence here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this one down and this one a little bit because I want some room to do my actual math. Now, you say to yourself, okay, can I go from atoms to grams in one shot? And... In order to do this, we always think of the little helpful tool here that I have down at the bottom. If you want to convert from grams to moles or molecules or atoms, the conversion is the same. It's just whatever you call them is different, but it's always going to flow that way. Grams to moles to molecules or atoms. So if I'm starting off with atoms, which is over here, and I want to get to grams, I first have to convert to moles and then to grams. So there's a separate step here. I just have to make a pit stop at the moles of H, or maybe I'll just say M-O-L-S, and then I can go to grams. So let's go for it. Now this is all converting, which means dimensional analysis. So start with always what you're given. 1.5 times 10 to the 24th atoms of H and when you're starting to do your ratios, multiply by that fraction, and you're always going to throw the unit that you don't want. In this case, you don't want atoms anymore. So that always goes on the opposite side. So atoms of H are going to go on the bottom. And we're now going to go from atoms to moles. So that's the next unit. Moles of H go up on the top. But what are the numbers that go here? Always worry about the units first, and then you could fill it in with your numbers. Well, going back and forth between moles and atoms is Avogadro's number. But now the thing is, well, what is Avogadro's number? Well, Avogadro's number 
is always one mole of anything, I'll label that as A, equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, either molecules or atoms of the same, um, of the same, um, species or substance. So I have moles and atoms, one mole, because it's one mole, goes with 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay. So now atoms cancel out. Beautiful. And we're left with moles now, but that's not the um, answer we want. We just did the first step, but now we got to go from moles to grams. So when you need to do another conversion, don't be scared. Just times it. Do the next dimensional analysis. There might not be enough time for you to do each step mathematically. So we'll try to get into the habit of just doing one whole dimensional analysis and then plugging it in at the end. So do the same thing as before. You don't want moles of H, so that goes on the opposite side, that goes on the bottom, and you want grams of H. Well now, moles to grams involves the periodic table. And what does the periodic table say? Well, for the periodic table, you have one mole of whatever you're talking about, so I'll list that as A, but that always equals the number in grams of that value on the periodic table. It's the molar mass, the periodic table, molar mass. So basically you're just searching for the mass that's on the periodic table. And if I look on my periodic table, um, I do see that hydrogen, one hydrogen is weighed in at 1.008. Could be just one. You want to put in one? Go. That's fine with me. All right. But I'm just going to put the specific number that I see on my periodic table. And that always equals one mole. The moles cancel out. And now I'm left with the unit that I want. I want grams because we have to find the total mass in grams. So let's do the math. Anything that's in the numerator is our multiplication. Anything that's in the denominator is division. So I just like to go straight from left to right. So I'll say 1.5. Now I like to use the EE button, second comma. This E or EE means times 10 to the. So all I have to do now is just press 24. If you do the EE button, uh, the calculator will group together all your scientific notation numbers and you won't have any issues. So you won't need parentheses. So I'll say divided by because this 6.022 is in the denominator, 6.022 times 10 to the, use that EE button, 23. And then I'll multiply by 1.008. So press enter. And there you go. So we have 2.5 grams of H. And I put 2.5 because I want to go by your uh, sig figs. There are two sig figs in the beginning. When you convert, you only care about the starting material. All these other numbers are standard, so they don't count for significant digits. So we just left with 2.5 grams. Now we just need to convert the one mole of sulfur into grams of sulfur. So we can do dimensional analysis here, or we can uh, see that it's just one mole. And remember, one mole going into grams is just the molar mass. But I guess so we'll just show the uh, dimensional analysis just to kind of get into the habit. Always start with what you're given. So one mole of S times by that ratio. Throw the unit that you don't want on the bottom. I don't want moles. And in this case on the bottom because it's the opposite unit. And I want grams. So grams goes up on top. And remember, one mole always is the mass of whatever the element is. And in this case, we got sulfur. So I just looked at my periodic table. I have one mole, and the number on mine is 32.06, if I'm not rounding. If you want to just press 62, that's fine with me. Moles cancel out. We're left with grams. That's the unit we want. So 32.06, but... I need it in two sig figs. So, you know, if we just show it up on the screen, 32.06, it's going to be the same number because anything times um, one is itself. But I'm just going to, for sig fig purposes, say that this is 32 grams of S. Okay. 
And now we have 88.0 grams of oxygen. That's just, maybe I'll just say grams. We don't have to do anything with that. So now we have the three total grams, 2.5 grams of H. We have 32 grams of sulfur and we got 88 grams of oxygen. So if we want to find the total, the total grams, all we have to do is just add them up. So I'm going to add up the 2.5 grams. And maybe what I'll do is I'll put them over here. So I have 2.5 grams. I got the 32 grams. And I got the 88.0 grams. Now I align them this way because we're going to take in the correct significant digits. So 2.5 plus 32 plus 88. Now, Kalki doesn't understand sig figs, right? You get an answer of 122.5. But we can only take the number of significant digits that we are all certain of. Now, there's an issue here. For each one of these, oh, what's going on here? Okay, so there's an issue, right? Because for these two numbers, I do know the tenths, but for the 32, eh, I don't know the tenths. So I can't bring my number out to the tenths because I'm missing that value. But the next best thing is they all know the ones place. So you have to cut your number off at the ones place. So it technically was 122.5, but I need it to be at the ones place, so that five will round up the two to a three. So one, two, three, Sesame Street. Is that even the number? I don't even know. But, but here is your total number of grams. You have 123 total grams, and letter A is complete. So... There's multiple parts for this question, so hang tight because we'll do letter B in a little bit, but I will talk to you then, all right? Uh, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you so much for viewing the video, and I hope this really helped you out. Um, yeah, good luck on your tests and quizzes, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.